Hey, this is Ant bringing you a Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In this one, we're going to go over a camera that uh, updates its position when the player enters a trigger, vo a trigger volume. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that now. So hit play. As you can see, you've got trigger volumes here. And as the player moves for them, the camera position is shifting. I'll just go back through the same path as well. So center, shifts upwards, and then shifts to the center again. So the idea is to create an adaptable camera so that when the player reaches a certain position it can be moved to higher lights or to direct the direction of travel that the player should go. In this case this is directing you towards a platform that I've just missed. But without further ado we'll go into the tutorial now. Okay so for this tutorial I've created a blank project under the uh, 2D paper side scroller template. Um, that you can just start a new project and select it from the drop down. Um, within blueprints. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a folder with two interfaces. So, new folder, right click on that, interfaces. First interface, I'm going to create this by going into blueprints, blueprint interface, and this will be for the camera. Let's make sure we're good. Something like that. So I underscore camera, and the next one is going to be uh, another interface. So blueprints, blueprints interface. And this is going to be the character. So the first thing to do is I'm going to go into the camera interface. I'm going to call this method change point of view. Or change POV. Okay. Next it's going to have an input which is going to be first one is going to be a boolean and this will be reset. Next under inputs for a new parameter we're going to have a vector. And we'll call this offset vector. Hit save. Let's drag that to the top, dock it for now. Go in this, we'll just call this, call this character methods. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. This is just for the character uh, to be placed onto the, the character. It won't actually have any functionality apart from it'll be used in the um, collision system. So next. We're going to go into 2D, uh, 2D side scroller BP, go into blueprints, and what we're going to do is you'll, if you go into this, you'll have all the standard uh, default codes. And then I'm going to go into class settings, and on the right here, under interfaces, I'm just going to add our I underscore character interface. Hit compile save. In fact, if you just go onto the drop down next to compile, and I'm just going to change that to save on compile on success only. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is create the camera itself. So we'll go back into the main screen. Uh, we can go into blueprints folder, right click, blueprints, blueprint class, actor. And we'll just call this camera underscore BP. Open that up. And what we're going to do is we'll add a component. And we'll add a camera in this. Now the camera, because we're dealing with 2D, this ideally needs to be in orthographic, not perspective. Um, if you try and run a 2D game in perspective, it causes a motion blurring issue. So we'll go over into the settings on the right, select that to orthographic, and we'll make the standard defaults. Yeah. We'll make it 1024 for now. Hit save. And what we'll do is we'll just drag this into the world. And we'll just try to get it roughly in the same place as the other camera. It doesn't have to be perfect. Rotate it. 90 degrees, and there we go. So 
So this will be the, the free actor camera that will follow the player around instead of the one that's in the 2D template. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is create the trigger volume that will move the camera when a player enters it. So in here, right click, can select blueprint class, actor, and I'm just going to call this trigger volume. Double click that to open it. And as you can see, it's just another standard actor with a default scene route. So for this, I'm going to add a component, type in box, and it should come up with box collision. I'm just going to call that collision. And might as well make that the default scene route as well, that's fine. So what I need to do next is we just need to add the event. So right click on that, add event, and then add on component begin overlap. But they hit compile and as you can see that's appeared there straight away so we don't need these two we'll move that down here so it's a bit more visible so from event begin play we want to get all actors of class we want to select camera bp let's get that and we want to promote that to variable. And we'll just call that camera ref. So camera reference short for that. That's fine. So next we'll do the begin overlap section. So from this we're going to drag out from other actor and we're going to ask does the, the colliding actor have the interface which is going to be our eye character that we attached in the to the 2D side scroller character. Drag a branch, obviously I'm going to drag a boolean from that. If that's true, we want to get our camera reference. We want to call change points of view. Now from this you can see there's a couple of properties that we need to change here. So what I'm going to do is I want to promote that to a variable. Right click, promote to variable, I'm going to call that reset. Uh, I want to do the same for this offset vector here as well. So right click, promote to variable, and we'll just call this offset. Okay, make sure that both of these are instance editable. So when they're both public here, you can see the IAP. Hit compile, and that's that actor ready to go. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that. We'll drag that in here. I haven't done the quality of life thing, which I'll do in a second. So same as we did on the other one. Get actor location, split the stroke pin, set actor location, split the stroke pin, and we're just going to connect the X and the Z. Okay, so for the next stage, we're going to add the camera code. So this might be a little bit long-winded, so I'll do this in sections. So we'll go into the camera BP. We'll go into the event graph, and we'll do the events begin play first. So the next thing we go is going to get the play of porn. And begin play, right click. Promote to variable, and we're just going to call that play. Next, we're going to get the actor rotation. We're going to get that. Right click on the return value, promote to variable, and we're going to call that. Get the wrong drop down. Start rotation. So next, after we just connected that, we're going to link that into a custom event. So right click in the graph, custom event, we just call this use camera for now. And then we'll call it here, use camera. And then what we want to effectively done is, as soon as we're using this camera, 
and it starts we want to make sure that the the camera moves to actually where the player is so if we play a ball get the axe location split the struck pin because we're not using all three of actors drag from the top one make a vector and just connect the x and the z axis and then what we're going to do is we're going to teleport this camera to where the actor is and we're going to make sure that the camera is facing the right way and connect the start rotation okay so the next part is to populate the use camera method so for this simply but we need to make sure that we're using the the camera that come we've put into the scene not the player camera so what we do is we go get con player controller we'll get a reference to self which is just the camera i need to set view target Oh, hang on. Hang on from that. Set view target with blend. Drag self into that. Hit compile and save. And next we're going to populate the tick functions. So what we'll do is we'll check if there's a valid player reference, a uh, player point. Do is valid. If not, get the player pawn and then hold Alt, drag the player pawn in and set that. And then what we'll do is from the setter, we'll call the use camera. And then what we could do is we're going to create another custom event, so below this it's called move to play drag off from this connect is valid to that and as you can see here That event tick will fire, it'll get the is valid node, it'll set the player point if it doesn't have a valid reference, and it'll use the camera to move it towards the, the play character, and then it'll move the it'll start moving the camera towards the player as well. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is update the codes um, so that it'll add it called the interface, which we haven't ad yet added. So we'll go into class settings, we'll right click on this, and we'll add iCamera. Hit that, and we'll go up here. And we want basically a change event change POV as per the camera interface call here. And from this, we'll drag out a branch. And what we can do is for the vector, we can promote that to a variable. Connect that to that. And then what we can do is call Alt, drag that in. Um, because we're basically calling the Boolean to reset the the camera, we'll just set all the added to the offset to zero on, on the all three axes. Next part. Go to move to player. I'm just going to rename this. I'm just going to call this update camera position instead. It makes more sense. So what we need to do next is first off get the player pool, get actor location, split the struct pin, and what we'll do, we'll make a vector. Let's say we're only dealing with X and C. 
and go to hit plus, vector add vector, drag in offset and connect that there. And then from this we need to the interpolate. So that's the target vector. So for the camera location, we want to get the camera location, get that to location, break the vector, and then what we want to do is get world delta seconds, and we need a couple new variables here. So what we're going to do is break from this select float and for the top one we're going to have let's call this one slow offset speed and for that one we we'll just have a new offset speed I'll just call this offset speed okay So connect the get out to location for the camera into the current location. I want to minus float. And we'll just connect the Z axis here. Drag from this node, type in absolute float. And we want to greater than and instead of this being a magic number, we'll promote that to a variable and we'll call that distance. And for now, if we just hit compile, I'm just going to set that for a distance of 200 units. Connect that into that boolean there. And then right at the end, return value, what we're interpolating to, we'll set out to location. And we're just going to connect the update camera position to there. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to demonstrate the trigger volumes in action. So if we go into the map, we've already got one in place. And what we're going to do is I'm going to set this one to the end, uh, set it to zero. I'm going to make that one a reset node, increase the scale up a bit on X and Z. I'm going to hold Alt, I'm going to move this up. I'm going to make this one go minus 500 in X. And then the last one, I'm going to make this into a reset as well. Clear these values, hit play. Okay, so the first one will reset it, but if you move into the second one, you can see that the camera shifts over and then it resets back once you've left that trigger volume. Thank you for watching my video, and if you like what you see, please subscribe and like, and feel free to leave a comment below if you have any feedback or suggestions. Take care guys, goodbye.